Coming up this week off screen. Captain Marvel goes higher, further, faster. The Maiden sets sail. Maggie Gyllenhaal, or Gyllenhaal, goes to kindergarten. We meet Ray and Liz. And go house hunting with Rosie. All those to come and more off screen. This is... This is off screen. Off screen. Off screen. latest film news and reviews this is off screen the movie marker radio show and podcast Welcome to Offscreen, I'm Van Cart. I am Case Allen. So, welcome back again, Mr. Allen. It's uh, good to be back. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, two times in two weeks. Is it John Hall? Is it Gillen Hall? Who knows? It's one of the question, great questions of life. Isn't it, it? it is, isn't it? I, yeah. I don't know. I've always gone with Gillen Hall because Entourage did, but I learnt so many actors' names that way. I, w- I would never base my life decisions <laughs> on, on Entourage. On entourage <laughs> this is where I've been going wrong all these years. What, no? what would Piven do? <laughs> That's it, man. I find myself standing in line, yeah. like, should I be Jeremy Piven in this moment? And the answer invariably should be no. no never be no, Jeremy ne- Piven. Never, never be Piven. Never ask the crowd. Unless no. it's that superhuman uh, ability for rapid hair regrowth, which Jeremy Piven seems to have had in the late 90s, some point in the late 90s, around the millennium. I, I think him and Elton John run in the same circles. Yeah, because I, 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 I love Gross Point Blank, and every time I revisit same. Gross Point Blank, I'm like, why Ten is years. that? Ten years, man. Yeah, why does that skinny bald dude? Look like Jeremy Piven. That yeah. skinny bald dude is Jeremy Piven. Jeremy oh my Piven. god. Yeah, anyway, so welcome to off screen. Welcome to the Jeremy Piven hairline appreciation podcast. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And also, he got buff. I feel like we'd be remiss yeah. if we didn't mention that. But so, before we get to uh, the news, box office top five reviews, and all the good stuff we usually get to enjoy, uh, I, wanted, I need a piece of film news to kick us off. What have you got, I got for me? You. I got you. What have you got for me? Um, we have got a new dead shot. For a yeah, new Suicide Squad film that we're going to have, it, it's now is cool. the, isn't it? It's the. the that's how we differentiate. We've got Suicide Squad and yeah. then the Suicide Squad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, but which it's... one is the Suicide Squad? That's the question. That's it. Yeah, and then next yeah. will be a Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the problem. The Final Destination series took head on when they called it the Final Destination. Yeah. Got to the next movie, said screw it, it's just Final Destination Five. But yeah, well, for, for the last one, you get five in Old Destination, don't yeah, you? I know. That's what we had. That would have been great. Well, this yeah. The Suicide Squad, it's, mm-hmm. it's a reboot. Because, you know, it was, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Do we one? have confirmation now if Margot Robbie's coming back? I think that has been confirmed. Has it? She is coming back. Yeah, and wait for it. So is Jai Courtney. <laughs> wait, wait, Jai Courtney? Yeah. Hang on a minute. They, they couldn't get the likes of Will Smith back, but they, <laughs> they could get heavy hits or like Jai Courtney. If I was making a film in my garage, I could probably get Jai Courtney. <laughs> and if, if he wants work, I might make a film. I might, or you I might can eat it. protein bars, Jai. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we jest, he's, he's, he's all right. He's, he's perfectly serviceable. Yeah, he's, he's his generation is Joel Kinnaman. <laughs> <laughs> the same generation, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's back years, Joel Kinnaman. Uh, James Gunn is writing and directing The Suicide Squad, I take it? Yeah, because James Gunn has made a film about like a band of like outcast outlaws. And... <laughs> I can't imagine what such a movie would be called. Yeah. Perhaps the protectors of some sort of defined <laughs> Protect- space. Protectors of the universe or something, I think <laughs> yeah, it was. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's been tapped to do this because... Yeah. Why not? It was being Mel Gibson at one point, wasn't it? <laughs> How insane <laughs> Bizarrely. is that? Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, because Will Smith has either said that he doesn't want to come back or he's got other stuff going on. Um, so like, it's, it's them two Bad Boys sequels back to back. That's what it is. Isn't it? Yeah. You know, because we all knew those Bad Boys sequels were clearly going to happen sooner or later. We knew it couldn't possibly they've, be just they've, be. They've released an image yeah. from it. The, a weird GIF thing. That that no, I don't see. I don't even believe that was a you real don't image. That? I think that was just a pair of them went out for lunch. They were at the In and Out Burger, yeah. and and they just thought we'll take a selfie in the parking lot. And and you know what? We'll just you no know, phone it. We'll phone it in as if it's Bad Boys Three. I mean, want that to be true because I want Martin Lawrence to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to get a really good lunch because you, know, you, know, you know what Will's, Will's buying. I, I want the banquet box for two, all yeah. to me. I want Big Mama's big KFC and, banquet box. And then Will Smith says, "That's what I'm talking about." Yeah, yeah. Scene. yeah. Scene. 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 That's, that's your Bad Boys sequel. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, Will Smith's Will Smith is out. We do have someone else playing Who's Deadshot, in? Who's which in? is great. Uh, Idris Elba. Oh, oh, I like it. Because he, he's done with Marvel now. Yeah. He's, he's, he's gone. He's done. Yeah. He's done Why his not? time. He's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Like, like done his, his Viking bit. Done his Viking, yeah. 
That well, this, it's Idris Elba. Like, it's, Han, Handel was great, but Handel was always a supporting character. And... He was, and it's a shame. Yeah. But, uh, but then again, you know, that's what Disney Plus is for, when it's inevitably filled with uh, TV series adaptations of popular Disney franchises. There's that. Have you heard rumour about um, uh, Maleficent 2, or Maleficent Mistress of Evil? Yeah, I, I saw this yesterday. They announced the title, a release date, a plot synopsis, and a poster, didn't they? Yeah, there was a rumour that that isn't going to be coming out here in the cinema. That's oh. going to be launching... Disney Plus. There was an interesting uh, article I, re- I read this week. It was by uh, Scott Mendelson at uh, uh, Forbes. You know, like, one of my favourite film critics, just because he, he writes on a very nerdy level. And he shares a certain name with Ben Mendelson. <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> that's why does. I like him. <laughs> Only one of them has that H, though. That oh, that's H, a good point. Yeah. That H provides the true power that is the Mendo. The Mendo. The Mendo. This is actually a term, by the way, the Mendo. This has been going through film Twitter this week. But uh, he wrote a piece about why is Disney suddenly releasing this, 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 and they've got an Avengers sequel, a Star Wars sequel, a Maleficent sequel. Why, why is a Frozen sequel? Why is this all suddenly within this year? This doesn't seem sudden. This seems like people... Well, it, it's been positioning... Yeah. The, 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 the reasoning, apparently, in his mind, is... It's so that Disney Plus you know, doesn't have to wait more than a predetermined amount of time to have all of these Makes massive films available yeah. to them. Because Captain Marvel is going to be the first Marvel movie released on Disney Plus. Yeah, they've, they've said, but I said it's not going to be a Netflix in America because mm. that's apparently a massive selling point for Netflix US. Yeah. But uh, I feel like we've gone on a real tangent from DC to Marvel streaming. Who cares? We did uh, it. <laughs> we did it, we've, man. We've run the whole gamut of comics because there's only DC and Marvel. That's the only ones. We, we did, we did. Yeah, and I'm glad we took this journey together. There's no one else I'd rather have shared it with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, plug the podcast edition before we move on. So, where are we available now as a podcast, as an extended podcast? We are available. Yeah. Apple, iTunes, whatever they're being called uh, now. <laughs> itunes podcast podcasty apples. itunes yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Tim yeah. Cook's favourite podcast. Tim Apples. Tim, Tim Apples. Tim Sorry, Apple. Tim Apples. Yeah. Wow, that one's brilliant. Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Yeah. yeah. Relation of uh, Steve Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah clearly. Cool, 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 yeah. Yeah. They're cousins. Yeah. Uh, Deezer. St- Deezer, we're on Deezer, Stitcher. Stitcher. Stitcher's on there. Are we, are we on Spotify? We are on Spotify. Yes, we're on Get Spotify. In. And uh, we did said tune in, didn't we? Say tune in. We've not said tune in. We're on tune, tune in, in as well. Just, you know what? If SoundCloud? It's, I think we are on SoundCloud. Get like, around, don't This we? stuff's all automated and runs for it. We don't do this stuff. But just if there's a podcast <laughs> platform, just check. We're on there, Did probably. They, yeah. uh, oh. So, uh, first review of the week, then. Let's talk Which about is? The Kindergarten Teacher. So. So, not Kindergarten Cop. Not Kindergarten not, not Cop. Not some kind of, not related. Nope. Nope. And not to Dolph Lundgren's second Kindergarten Cop either. <laughs> yeah, they are often spoken of. Did you ever see it? I never got round to it. No, and also I've not seen the sequel to uh, A Cop and a Half. Which, oh my God. Which does exist, that is a thing. <laughs> oh, art director DVD, oh, terrible sequels, mm. fun. Okay, so The Kindergarten Teacher, which comes to us from writer-director Sarah Colangelo, it stars uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal as, uh, as a New York kindergarten teacher. Um in having a relatively dissatisfied home life, um, you know, her husband's not really there for her. Her kids seem to kind of resent her because she's more so focused on her job and fulfilling her own happiness. And basically, the void that's within her, she starts to try and fill by attending a local poetry class, uh, which is run by none other than Gael Garcia Bernal. Joking. I haven't seen him for a while. And what was he in? He... He's going to be something really blindingly obvious, and I've just missed it as well. No, I, I, can't, I no. can't. I think I might have a peruse on IMDb. Right. She then also discovers that one of the children in her class um, has, a, has a, 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 bear in mind this is a, ch- a class of five-year-olds, it's kindergarten, has an innate gift in creating and, and manifesting poetry. And she she determines through her writing class that he is, you know, a gifted child and wants to nurture his talent. And, well, it's where that desire actually ultimately takes her that forms the drama here. We've got a clip. The sun hits her yellow house. It's almost like a sign from God. Was that a poem? <laughs> that was a poem. The sun hits her yellow house. It is almost like a sign from God. Wow. With so few elements, do you think something very, very complex? I think we have a young Mozart. If you stay curious, then you can see the world however you want. Like a cat. 
So there's a tone to the marketing, as you can tell from that, because that's a kind of a trailer clip. And there's a tone to it that's a little on edge, if you know what I mean. Mm. And the thing is, it's a very crisp, very uh, grounded drama. It has real texture to it to begin with, but it just unfurls into what you would expect to be quite contrite, quite trite uh, kind of direction. But actually, because of the investability that you have in it, you, you kind of do go with it. Maggie John Hall's great in it. Like, I'm saying John Hall, by the way, not John Hall. I'm just, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying... You say John Hall, I'll say John yeah. Hall. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what I have chosen, <laughs> okay? If, if I am wrong, I will correct myself post-haste. Um... She's absolutely terrific, and I liked uh, Parker Sivak as uh, mm. as as the young boy, as, as Jimmy with the po- with the poetry. Uh, genuinely brilliant performance. Um, some really great performances all round, though. Uh, Gael Garcia Bernal, I thought was terrific, mm. very understated part. I thought he played it with just just real depth. He was he has a sort of a fantasy object quality to that to his character but he, at the same time he does make him real he does make him flesh and blood also quite like michael chernus um who i one of those faces i know he i know he's, he's in orange and new black and spider-man isn't he yes he is yeah. I, I, I knew spider-man homecoming because he's the the tinkerer isn't he Bill <laughs> yeah he yeah. is uh, piper's brother in orange and new black ah yes he is that yeah. you mention it uh yeah he's uh, maggie john hall's, hall's husband uh very good role um also quite liked rosa salazar in uh a part that I think had to be played with a very specific balance. Is she of from uh, Alita. She's Alita. Yeah, yeah. I think it oh, she, played she is with. Alita. She is Alita right. herself. Yeah. Oh, cool. She, she's the motion captured likeness of the, the <laughs> forms Alita. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say this. I think it's a very, it's a much darker film than you'd be led to believe. But I think it's really gripping and really unmissable. I think she's superb in it. Like I'm Maggie. Yeah, Maggie's she's great in it. I can't, I can't think of anything that I don't like her in. To be fair, kind, yeah. Kind of like, like Jake as well. Like, like, <laughs> kind of like that. I know we always get compared with her because they are siblings. Mm. Although I don't like Jake in The Day After Tomorrow, but that has nothing to do with his acting and more to do with the fact oh, that I'm Sam. sick of Poor seeing Sam. that film, man. Look, I'm, every... I'm, I'm not sick of hearing Dennis Quaid say, Sam, got to find Sam. If you pick a random day out of the yeah. year and I visit my mum, I guarantee you a day, The Day After Tomorrow will be showing on telly that night and she will watch it. End to end, it she will like watch it. It is like on Film 4. It, it, it's, it it's probably on film for right now. <laughs> this very second. We'll go, well, wait, we'll go watch it. So, uh, The Kindergarten Teacher, I think it's great. I think you should go and see it. So, check it out. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Offscreen, the Movie Marker radio show and podcast. And we're back, Mr. Allen. So, uh, shall we? Before we get more film hmm. film news from you, more of what's going on, uh, let's have a look at Rosie real quick. What do you say? Yeah. So I don't uh, know what it is. So, you don't know what yes. it is, but it's it's not the prequel to the Lily Collins, Sam Claflin rom com Love Rosie. I've seen that more times than I would care to mention. I've never watched it a second podcast. time. I kind of really. I would kind of like to treat yourself. I'd also like to I think it's on Netflix. Who am I kidding? I know for a fact it's on Netflix. <laughs> I'd like to revisit. I give it a year. I, oh, feel, I did not. Did you not, did not care for that? It had Stephen Merchant being hilarious in it. I think that's that's worth. Well, pick like ten other projects. Yeah, true, been, like... true. Any press junket interview for fine with my family. Anyway, okay. So uh, Rosie, which comes to us from writer Roddy Doyle and director uh, Paddy Brethnack. Uh, this is an Irish drama starring Sarah Green as Rosie, and uh, Rosie is um, a twenty-something mother. Uh, she has I think three, three or four children. One is a teenager. The others are quite young, um, and they, she and her husband have found themselves forced out of their home which they rent they, they lived in a you know rented suburban home but when the landlord has uh, been forced to sell up or has just has kicked them out it's yeah. kind of unspecific um, they basically are forced they are sort of the you know the invisible homeless as they're called yeah, you know, this whole the phenomenon of the invisible homeless, yeah. where you don't count on homeless statistics because you know you're sleeping on couches and things. For instance, you're yeah. like that. So they are forced by way of storing all their belongings in their car to go from hotel to hotel every single night in a row. And Rosie spends her days simply calling up hotels one at a time and just asking, do you have a room available? And paying for it on a a, a Dublin City Council credit card. It's about the toll this takes and exactly how devastating living this life can actually be. Uh, We've got a clip for you. Hiya, yeah, I'm looking for a room. Uh, For a week, just, I'd say. Three nights would be brilliant. Even for a night, just... 
Rose, are you living in your car? Uh, we're in between places. I said, a bit mad like. Shh. Trying to find somewhere to stay tonight. Hiya, I'm looking for a room. Just tonight, like. Okay, thanks anyway. I end up not having time to look for somewhere proper to live, something we can afford. So the tone they've gone for in the marketing and the clip there, for instance, is something that feels a sort of lilted Hector in a way. You remember that Peter Mullen film, Peter Hector? Mullen, yeah, of course. There's, there's something of that, it's not quite as bleak as Hector, although, you know, Hector has its its moments of true beauty and I think is a wonderful film. Um, this is something comparable to, I would suppose, almost I, Daniel Blake, but... It's not just that movie, you know, with a gender flip. It's not like I, Danielle Blake or anything. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a lot more rooted in the real. Whereas, you know, I, Danielle Blake kind of went a bit sensationalist towards the end, particularly. This is very much in be rooted in being a real story and a human story. And, mm -hmm. You know, this is a true kind of a drama. This is a true world drama. Um, I think it works in large part because Sarah Green's tremendous in it. Like, really good. I didn't know her off. I mean, there was something familiar about her. And when I pulled her up on like IMDb, it, she's one of those actresses who's been, had small roles in loads of movies, but you can't specifically pick her out in your memory. And the films I'm thinking of now were, were like Black 47. You remember that with uh, not Sam Neill, Hugo Weaving? Yeah, yeah. I did that, didn't I? <laughs> that. That just happens. That just happens, oh, doesn't it? Uh, and and Penny Dreadful and things like that. So I, I have seen her and I've seen her enough to be familiar with her, but I, I couldn't pick her out. And she really makes an impression. I think she's brilliant in this. Just a really nuanced, really moving performance. And the way in which she plays this as, you know, it's a mother who's got to stay together, who's got to keep it, you know, stable, to keep it all in her head, all the turmoil mm. contained as much as possible, you know, for the sake of the kids. She plays it to absolute perfection. And those moments in which she gets to let that single you know, that <laughs> single strain of a tear out kind of thing. Those moments are brilliant. I thought it was a genuinely great movie and I recommend very highly that you see it. I've got a link. I'll, I'll share oh, it on the screen. I link. can't wait to watch it. Uh, yeah, do, recommendation? Yeah, do recommend it very highly. Oh my God, so, we're, like two, we're two films in and two. you've enjoyed them both. I, here's the thing. What's the last time this ever happened? Here's the thing, by the way. Did you notice this week? I mean, yeah. this goes out on Friday, which is International Women's Day. This is International it Women's is. Week. Hashtag feminism. Yeah, but yeah. all the films this week, do you notice a thread? The actual release dates have lined up for a change and we're actually getting yeah. female-driven movies That's for International nice. Women's Day. That's really good. Yeah. Well done, films. Thank God the distributors finally are together. Yeah. Okay. Well, with, with Captain Marvel, you kind of expect it. And, yeah. and it's, it's good that they've been pushing so much. And, true, true. Yeah. Uh, so, some news to take us to the next review. And what you got for me, sir? Something big, I hope. Something big. Yeah, this is pretty big. So, um, the Ghostbusters film that's being released next year. You heard year. about this? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, potential people that are going to be starring that have been announced or said to be in talks. And it's really, really cool. Um, so, Finn Wolfhard. Oh, man, that name. Because... Eight is nostalgia. He, oh, he's, 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 like, he's like nine. Also, we already know he looks good in a Ghostbusters uniform. We know he looks good. Yeah. I hope that's why he got it. That's I it. I hope that's what it is. watching it on Netflix. And Get like, me someone that looks good. Give me a kid that looks good in a Ghostbusters uniform. Yeah. Stranger Things comes out. It's like, I found your boy. I got it. <laughs> and then presumably, he watched uh, The Sinner Season 2 and was like, oh, Kevy Coon, she's really good. Because she's going to be in it as well. So she's going to be playing his mum. You know, I loved this. her in Gone Girl. Yeah, you know my so love. Like of, underrated. Yeah, you know my love of Gone Girl. Anyway, I, I think it's the best movie of that year. But uh, yeah. such, down, such a good performance. But I think she's really good in it. Like Gary Coon was really good. Well, yeah, she I've. Gone, um, hmm? Didn't she start in one of the Walking Dead series? Oh no, or is that the? She's in the Leftovers. That's the. I'm thinking of the sheriff from uh, Gone Girl is one of the stars of one of the Leftovers. Uh, one of the Walking Dead. Yes, yes, things. she is. Now, um, Kevin Gary Coon is sister. Mm. Uh, do you know who uh, she's married to? No, I do not. You're going to love this. Go on. Tracy Letts. Tracy Letts? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Is I love that... Tracy Letts. God. Yeah. I, I, love the, <laughs> I love the fact now that on the coolness spectrum, I have to refer to Tracy Letts as Carrie Coon's husband. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, by by, by rights, yeah. You know, in that way that John Legend is just Chrissy Teigen's husband. You know. Yeah. He got her. <laughs> yeah. He got her. But, like, having an he not, got is not, somehow... Not he got her. He got her. Yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, but it's still somehow less cool than being Chrissy Teigen's husband. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I just imagine. I just imagine. Yeah. So, um, what review have we got next? We've got something to come up. Is it Ray and Liz next? It is Ray and Liz next. <laughs> professional. <laughs> we, we, we've got we've got this together. Okay, this is I, this is going to be very difficult to be professional, but I kind of have to step back from this one a bit. Okay, so I hadn't heard about this until the BAFTAs this year. And I think it got a special, what was it a, a special mention. It? It's just a special mention, I think, right. or or uh, I don't know actually. If I am, I feel like it was up for. Do you know if we have that like British film mm. category? I it might be so. like the outstanding debut one because we have that as well. Well, this is written and directed as a film by uh, Richard Billingham, the photographer who years ago uh, put in an in I think it was one of the Saatchi art shows a series of photographs of this squalid council home that his parents lived in and, you know, the, 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 the world in which they inhabit. His father was, uh, you know, by his own description, a uh, slovenly alcoholic with with, with sort of, you know, de- uh, very varied and, and deranged behaviour. His mother was, you know, 20 years uh, younger and a sort of flowery dress chain smoker. Mm. And, yeah, so he, what he's done now is create a movie adaptation of this work of art that he actually created and it's uh, it's a little odd I'm going to play you a clip and uh, give you a sense of the general tone he goes for with it when are you getting these walls papered Elizabeth when we get round to eat <laughs> ah, it's a lovely photo that yes lovely yes it is a lovely photo eh sit your ass down then Oh, it's lovely and warm in here, Elizabeth. I say, it's lovely and warm in here, isn't it? Will you stop bloody repeating yourself? Soon as you're coming here, how you doing it? Sorry, Elizabeth. Did you recognise the voice of that guy in that clip? Yeah, I did, and I'm struggling to place it. Right, it's Tony Way. I had to look it up because I couldn't... No way! It. It's Tony Way. I yes, know! Way. Yes way, <laughs> Ted! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this plays very much as a sort of with the sort of tone of a kitchen sink drama, but it plays in this abstract, almost cartoonishly bleak setting. Um, the, it goes a little bit all over the shop. It seems to be about no one coherent thing so much as just whatever sticks to the wall when you flung absolutely everything at mm. it. Um, it's not very successful as a film, let's just say. <laughs> but as a... As a visual work... Yes, it's great. You know, you have an absolutely brilliant companion to <laughs> the already existing still photographs of this. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I will say this, though. I mean, Ella Smith uh, is in it, plays his mum. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of hers anyway. She always turns up in sp- supporting roles in, like, British shows and things. British movies, British right, shows. Yeah. And she always makes an impression. She, she always finds a way to sort of very slyly steal the scene. And I'm thinking about uh, that Danny Boyle-produced series Babylon a few years ago. Oh, from on uh, Channel 4. Yeah, you know yeah. the one? And I think it was Patterson Joseph in it? Or, yes, he was. And James Nesbitt? Uh, yes, yeah. I believe that's the one. And also, she turned up in uh, Kill Your Friends with Nicholas Holt as well. She oh, seems to yeah, take I, these. I hated, I hated that. I love because I, really? I, I love I love the book so much. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting debate to have. Another yeah. Time. I, I, yeah. Yeah. But I uh, so Ella Smith, I thought was very good. I just I I couldn't connect with a lot of the rest of it. I, it. I mean, great visual work, as I say. But I mean, outside of that, I mean, this is this is relegated to the museum screening room for me. <laughs> With the latest film news and reviews, this is Offscreen, the Movie Marker radio show and podcast. And we're back, Mr. Allen. So, uh, where shall we uh, venture next? Um, to that box office top five. Number five. So, either Green Book, or if you are over the age of 50, The Green Book. <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it, that one? Oh, my I yeah I, I met up with uh, someone recently and uh, they said oh I, I saw this really really great film um, it's it's called the Green Book you've really got to see it this person is seventy four wow is, is my dad oh oh okay right yeah fair so it's the Green yeah. Book well maybe it goes back to when it was called the Green Book I suppose but, but that's but, fine but the film is not called the Green Book well that, that's very true <laughs> and they do they do refer to it as the Green Book within the film dude my mum calls it the Facebook I mean yeah, it's one well it's still no excuse Oh. I mean, JT even says, drop the vert, it's clean. You should, you should say that to her. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so Green Book, which I don't... I'll be honest with you, I, I think is better than it's not. I don't quite get the, the, the hate that some people have for Green Book. Some people are very dead set against I it. I democratically do understand the hate, mm. but 
I enjoyed it. That's it. It is that, isn't it? Yeah. So if I want to be analytical about the film as a product, then yes, there starts to be issues. But I think when you sit and just enjoy the film, take it on its own just merits... Just enjoy those performances. It's just it's exactly. the two of them. Like, yeah. As a two-hander, it's really... See it on its terms, fine. When you step back, yes, things start to look a little murky, but who cares? Yeah. You know, that's that's you're viewing the film or you're viewing the product. There are two yeah. very distinct You won't be able to see there. the film out of the way of Peter Fowley's penis. <laughs> exactly, there is yeah. that. So, um, which is much more of a compliment than I intended it to be. Yeah, I think so. I uh, think yeah. so, totally. Um, <laughs> but I really loved it. I think Mahershala da- damn sure deserved that award. Yeah, damn sure crazy. That statue. Remy, Remy from House of Cards <laughs> as a double Oscar winner. That was so weird. Within like, what? Three, three years, two, three years? Dude, Mr. Robot's an Oscar winner. You I know. know. <laughs> Not even Mr. Crackers. Robot. Elliot from Elliot. Mr. Robot is, is the. Uh, although, did Christian Slater ever win an award and I just forgot it? Uh, he he win he's never won an Oscar. Oh, okay. no, I don't think he's ever been nominated. Uh, it was strange. There's always some random thing like 1988 that you've just forgotten about. You know. No, I mean, he could be nominated for the wife because he's in that film for like two and a half minutes. So he hit the dench line. He hit the dench. Yeah, that, yeah. That is as long as you line. hit the dench line, you're good yeah. for those awards. But uh, yeah, I liked Green Book very much, and I will watch it again. I think it's it's a film that I, you know, mums and dads world over will enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And you know what? We lived through Crash winning Best Picture. I think we know there are. Uh, there's a long way to go before it gets that bad. Green Book is yes, in no people, way as bad as Crash. People have already been comparing it to Crash. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. Alas. Just us. Number four. Uh, how to Train Your Dragon 3, colon, The Hidden World. I had great uh, fun with it. I, yeah. I have still... I'm still not, I've not seen it. But you like yes, the first two, presumably. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got, got a soul, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> got a beating heart. <laughs> you have two eyes and a beating heart. <laughs> Well, it's got two thumbs and loves to feel. This guy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Of, of course. And like, they are like up retro on DreamWorks films. I think so, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think this is a worthy trilogy closer. I think it's the second best one of the movies. I don't think anything can come quite as close to the second one for my liking. That's it's the Godfather 2 of that particular series. Yeah. But, uh, Although we don't spell 2 with Roman numerals, so just put a number 2 there. I know. Unlike Frozen 2, classy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like Frozen E, isn't it? Or Frozen. Frozen I. Frozen I. I. <laughs> Frozen I. Well, a lot of it does seem to take place at sea. So, anyway. It does, yeah. Um, oh, there's, there's rumours. There's rumours about know, that film. I know. Ooh. But Half Train Dragon, I had a lot of fun with. I thought the fact that they replaced uh, TJ Miller behind the scenes with someone putting on a TJ Miller voice was hilarious. Oh, I forgot that he, he was even a part of those films. It's a dude doing a TJ Miller impersonation. Is it? It's brilliant. Is he like like DJ Miller? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. DJ Miller. Yeah, DJ exactly. Miller. Yeah, like Rami and Sammy Malik, DJ and TJ <laughs> Miller. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, um, yeah just just low key, just sweep him under the rug. But yeah, I thought it was a good solid end. It did tug at the heartstrings. It did make me laugh, whoop, cheer. Who who yeah. is the bad guy? Is that is it F. Murray Abraham? I believe it is F. Murray Abraham this time round. Well, yeah, I, I, was was it, I was going to say like Homer Simpson. Was it Jamin uh, Hansu? Uh, last time, yeah, Gmon is in the second one. The second one. I, I forget the first one entirely. Has the first one even got like an out and out villain? I don't remember the first one. I saw the first one twice back, like when it came out. I was about it. Can't remember anything. I might have to rewatch that. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. But, uh, yeah. Well, I remember enough to. But anyway, so, sad to point. You know, dragons were involved. Dragons were involved. You know, Jared Butler had a Scottish accent. And TJ Miller was present. TJ Miller so, was, present. was present. Yeah. Number three. Instant family. Not Insta family. Instant family. <laughs> well, Insta family is like every family nowadays, isn't it? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. come here for a selfie, children. <laughs> Did you show like uh, a bunch of uh, pictures of uh, kids doing the dress up thing for World Book Day? Oh, on, yeah, on yeah. BBC Breakfast this morning. Oh, and man. a bunch of them were just like all like, like Instagram pictures that. Some parents, you know, have like gone into loads of effort to make the costume and then done these Instagram photo shoots. You've got all that to come, man. Although oh, I, I know, will say, yeah. I will say, as I was driving, because obviously we're recording this on Thursday, which is, you know, World Book Day, I drove past like a granddad bringing the kids home from school kind of thing, and a little girl was dressed as uh, Veruca Salt. Veruca oh, that's Salt? awesome. Which one's the one in the red dress? Uh, it is Veruca, that's, isn't that's it? That's Veruca Salt. Yeah, Violet, Violet Beauregard's in blue. Yeah, Violet, but, you're turning Violet, Violet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I saw a little girl dressed as, as Veruca Salt. Oh, that's cute. The one that wants everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Basically, yeah. just sort of like me as a little girl. Her, her yeah. dad in that, mm. Rory Kinnear's dad in real life. Really? Yeah, and I now, now you know, know that. Next time you see that film, you'll be like, well, obviously. Yeah, well, it's going to bug me like now. 
<laughs> so Instant Family, better than it has any right to be. I genuinely love this film. In fact, mm. I actually watched this a second time because it was on the on my flight back from New York. I said I was going to watch it uh, last week. Um, I I didn't. No, um, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. I would I will watch it. Uh, <laughs> uh, this option. It's it's a daddy's home ish concept, right? But applied with and executed with an almost Apatow sensibility mm. for most of its runtime until it then starts introducing plot mechanics and you do kind of feel like I'd really rather you'd not done plot mechanics I was kind of just happy with the Apatow level stuff and the mm. thing is though it's still charming enough to pull it off anyway so it all works yeah so yeah I'm Let fine it, it ends on a you know pretty saccharine note you know that you kind of expect and you think okay well, I'd be disappointed if it didn't yeah I mean you just yeah. sit and think like you're going to go for the sugar with this, and then they absolutely do, and you're like, oh, nice. Pour it on. Nice. I'm in on that. And, you know, Wahlberg's fun, and, and Rose Byrne's fun, and, uh, uh, oh, Isabella Mona uh, steals the show as Dora. The... Dora. Yeah, Dora. future Dora, yeah. Steals the show. I was a big fan. Number two. The Lego Movie 2, colon, the second part. Which is not as awesome as the first movie. Well, of course, it's an animated <sighs> unless you're... How to Train Dragon 2. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or Toy Story 2, my favourite. <laughs> yeah, someone was having a big debate about that the other day. They were really? like, oh, I don't think it's that good. Um, oh, I can't remember what it was. This, this yeah. person is clearly wrong. I, I saw that film mm. like four times when I was a kid in the cinema. Yeah, I, I think it. I did something similar. It was one that you saw, it was just like, holy God, this is awesome. Like, yeah. this is way better than I thought it was going to be. Like, I think you get like. Mm. Like when Toy Story mm. One comes out, it's like wow, like the achievements of it. Yeah, and then Toy Story Two is like, oh my god, this is like a proper film. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, was, I was a kid, and then there was a Darth Vader Luke reference in it, so I was like, ah, it's a film reference in a film. <laughs> it was, for me, it's the two thousand one notes as he jumps over the floating platforms. Oh yeah, and stuff like that. That's Even great. as a kid, that made me laugh. Yeah, but again, as awesome a sequel that, as that was, I don't think Lego Movie Two uh, can possibly uh, compare. The one thing this uh, just doesn't feel quite as cohesive as the first movie does i mean i can see they're trying to be a bit more ambitious with it it's not quite as effective i think maybe the message is a little bit too convoluted but or yeah. it, just in how it's executed the message isn't convoluted but the manner in which they attempt to lay it out it's i think a is a bit much mixed. um also making it into a musical at times feels very forced and I don't know if that's just because Tiffany Haddish is so overexposed at the moment, or or I'm kind of sick Maybe. of Will Arnett's Lego Batman, or I, I would rather just have a sequel to that because I yeah. I love that. But uh, you know, this is like the lowest grossing one of these, surprisingly. And to be fair, having seen the film coming out of it, I think yeah, yeah I can kind of see why it does feel like the weakest. I don't of the I don't Lego want movies. that to be a deterrent for making more though, because I. Hmm. I First one's great. I'm sure this is perfectly enjoyable. Yeah, I want Billion Brick Race. Like that's the one I'm. That's that's been shelved, hasn't it? It's, it's been cancelled now, but that's that's the cancelled. one that this was building to. I was looking forward to that. Yeah, because it was going to be like Cannibal Run. Yeah, so but Lego pieces. Like, which... Imagine the brands that Lego could put in there. Ah, oh. I know. Yeah. Number one. Fighting with my family. Love it. Love it. So it's happy. Done really well. That's yeah. that's great. So happy. Right. It's number one. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a good movie. It is a really nice, sweet, charming movie. You know, it, mm. it it you know it doesn't try to be anything beyond this nice, sweet, you know, charming movie. Florence Pugh's great in it. Laura, uh, Jack Loudon's go on. Florence Pew Pew. pew. Sorry, <laughs> what remember. Yep. We need a button. We need a button. We need a, That's what we do. Pew pew. We'll get the pew sound from, from like New Hope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Flowers Pew Pew and uh, Jet Laden are uh, genuinely great in it. I had a lot of fun with Nick Frost and Lena Headey as her parents. I thought they they were great. Um, you know, The Rock, not quite as big a player in it as the marketing would have you believe, like where he's front and centre on the poster. He's but really I guess it's nice to see him in this little like, yeah. indie film, isn't it? It is. It really is. I bet he's enjoying it as well, being part of it. Oh, he's he's loving it by all accounts. He's yeah. Insta activity. Look on, yeah, look on his Instagram. Yeah. And, and, uh, That's where I get most of my news. No, it's, it's, just, now, yeah. it's just for Rock's Instagram thing. Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he predicts world, world events with surprising uh, accuracy and speed, doesn't he? He does, yeah. And then he gives us new, um, new like, clothing options, <laughs> new, new Under Armour. <laughs> Don't, I was in the Under Armour store under the World Trade Center. and really? Uh, I was looking at the special Project Rock line. Yeah. Yes, which is, I'm just I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just like a you know, chubby, chubby Arab dude. I can't be buying Dwayne Johnson stuff, man. Yeah, you, can, you can't see me and that stuff either. <laughs> Even like an Under Armour yeah. like, baseball cap. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So uh, let's go straight on to uh, the next review then, shall we? Which uh, is uh, Maiden. 
Cool. So Maiden is a document, new do a new dog wolf documentary. So automatically, there's a certain quality bar you expect. You know, that's like okay, dog my wolf. expectation is high. Exactly, dog wolf reports. You know, Blackfish, Studio Fifty Four, such works. <laughs> all, all the comedies, all the comedies, <laughs> or actually, all the really, really good documentaries. So this is from Alex Holmes, who you know knows a thing or two about documentaries. Mm. And this is, you know, it's it's funny you bring this out the same week as Captain Marvel because this also chronicles the thirty-year-old exploits of a trailblazing woman. Uh, this time it's uh, Tracy Edwards, though. Do you you know Tracy Edwards, the uh, the sailor? Yes. Yes, right. Yeah. So this is the story of how in 1989 she formed the first female, all-female crew to sail in the Whitbread Round the World race. I've got a clip for you. For me, sailing was about freedom. It was freedom of everything. It was leaving everything behind. My father died when I was 10. My parents instilled in me a sense of determination. So when I heard about the Whitbread Around the World race, it was just something I had to do. Sailing at that time was very male-dominated, and there were just no women anywhere in it. The Whitbread Round the World race at 33,000 miles is the longest and most challenging on Earth. I wanted to be part of this. I remember going to the skipper, and he went, we're not going to be the only racing team in the world with a girl. And that's when I made the decision to put an all-female crew into the race. So, Tracy Edwards there for you. Now, I didn't really... I mean, I knew of the story. I knew, you know, Tracy Edwards had done this, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s. I uh, didn't really know the specifics in, in and out of the, the story, you know. And I sat down to watch this thinking, oh, OK, you know, great. It's, you know, it's a bit of news I don't really yeah. have that much familiarity with. This to me, you know, this this is the kind of thing that, you know, it's, it's instead of reading the Wikipedia page, mm. kind of, kind of a, an event... And I sat there and I was just genuinely captivated by it. So there's a, there are entire other levels on which this, this story has been untold. And one of the ones which, I mean, some pe people are somewhat aware of is the fact that when this all-female crew comes together, they are absolutely derided by the press. Like, the press absolutely just sharpen their knives and go for them, which is in tandem with the entire 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 sailing world doing the same. Because, obviously, the sailing world is entirely men, and they get some of these men and some of these journalists back, put them on camera, and actually get them to cop to it. And it's surprising that, ne that literally every single one of them seems to be like, yeah, I was, I was totally wrong. I was, you know, I was an ass for, 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 the, for the first five minutes, and then uh, very quickly learned I should probably stop talking <laughs> and just start... I Cheering. Yeah, that there's quite good that's that's quite well. I mean, I also really liked um there is an inherent humour to be found in Tracy Edwards herself and, and her exact perspective of what, what transpired. Mm. And as you can hear from the clip, it's you know, she was just told we, we're not going to be the only team with a girl with a girl on our boat, yeah. and I think there was something like five uh, five women in the entire pool of people competing in the Whitbread race that year, and they were all like cooks and and serving staff on the boat, and her motivation for this great big feminist thing that she does, this great big watershed moment, is not in any way intended to be such. It's simply out of the middle finger initially. It's simply out of the, no, no, I'm doing this. Sim and you've told me I can't, so I'm simply going to have to go around you and do it myself. And I love it. It's a brilliant story. There is a narrative feature in this, presumably starring Felicity Jones, and inevitably hurtling I'll towards... Oh, give it, give it time. Clearly hurtling towards a BAFTA nomination. You know, like Lily Collins and Lily J. We'll get the Lilies in there as well. And... But that's the thing, because and you think about something like that, if they ever made a movie of this, every part would have to be really intricately cast because mm. the documentary is so tightly put together and so well-built and well-structured. It's very concise. Well, we it's, have a history of them kind of failing when it comes to making a feature film out of a documentary. It's very true, yes. The, yeah. uh, the, the one, the, the adaptation of the, the Colin Firth one. Oh, you yeah, know the one, the one sailing one movie called, last yeah. year, wasn't it? What was it, it called? Oh. The, the Mercy? The Mercy, hey. yes. I don't know why I said that, that one. That went wrong. Um, um, it was um, just Gordon Levitt. Yes, I know. Man, Man on Wire. Man on Wire as well. Was and The Walk, was it called? The Walk, yes. The Walk, the walk yeah. yeah. But uh, we shall see. I mean, I thought this was a terrific documentary, though. This is an absolute blinder of a documentary. It's... 
Uh, only 86 minutes as well. Oh. Uh, so it, it's quite short and concise, but it, it does tell the story and it does tell a hell of a story in doing so. And uh, hearing about how these women have, you know, had the media trying to play them off of one another and like the, how they only get asked about how they get on as opposed to how they're getting on with the race. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, a group of women in a boat. Oh, you must be, you must be in fighting. Okay. And the, the, yeah. it then cuts back to contemporary talking headshots of these women just going, can you believe that? <laughs> You believe this guy? Like this guy, you know. I remember guy being like, oh, and the, yeah, and then cut, cut back <laughs> yeah. to the guy saying, "Look, I was an ass for the first five minutes." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you could constantly cut back to that moment from the from the Chappelle uh, Rick James thing where he cuts back, cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. You know that kind of mea culpa <laughs> moment. And yeah, I just thought it was a really solid doc. It's say like, cut between contemporary talking head interviews uh, and actual old school camcorder footage captured on the race itself. Uh, you know where they used to have the date. Printed on the and, and every real exported, yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, really worth seeing. Really? Can't recommend highly enough. Do you, you'd absolutely love it, man. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Off Screen, the Movie Marker Radio Show and Podcast. And we're back for one last ride, Mr. Allen. So, um, should, where should we go? Say, say it like Vin, or don't say it at all. Commit. In the family. Family. <laughs> I got friends. I got family. So, Look, you, um, you got a speech impediment, Pop. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. Shall we have a, a quick piece of film news before we get to uh, the biggie of the week? Is there anything uh, we can discuss real quick? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, I found this quite interesting. I think this um, was released like a couple of... Probably like the day after we last met. Actually. Okay, well, we'll go. Um, so, you know the, um, the Universal Monster Films... Have essentially been bought by Blumhouse. Yes, I sort of got that vibe. Yeah, yeah. The Blumhouse was sort of taking stewardship of them. Yeah, so that whole dark universe thing mm. that went so well, that's kind of gone. Now. I know we had news a while about that Lee Winnell was going to write, was he going to write and direct an Invisible Man movie for them? And this is what this is about. Okay, go on then, yeah. what have we got? So um, a while ago when it was under the dark universe banner, mm. they said that uh, Johnny Depp was he, going to he be... He was in the photo shoot, wasn't he? Yes, with he was. Javier Bardem that and... Weird... But, like, none of them were actually together. In that. that was just a really well photoshopped picture. Oh, yeah, it None was. of them were together. They just. Oh, cause, yeah, because yeah, they yeah. each had separate pictures where they were in exactly the same pose. It was great, yeah. <laughs> but no, let's make it look like they were all together. Yeah. Watching this at the same Clearly, that, that, that Hollywood Reporter shoot that they did. Yeah. You know, yeah. Crackers. Um, yeah, he is not going to be in it. Go on. Um, but uh, Elizabeth Moss is going to be in it. Yeah, I heard that. That's mental. That's cool. And isn't she the lead as well? She's, she's, she's the lead. Yeah. The female lead, in which case. Universal hats off, to, hats off to you for that one. That is, if yeah, if this is going to be the Invisible Woman, how ace is that? Oh, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know how this is going to go. I mean, is it is it an Elizabeth Shoe in Hollow Man kind of a scenario? Is Poss- possibly, and like even even that, I'm happy with just because I I love Elizabeth Moss. Um, hmm. I would rather see her. As the Invisible Woman, yeah, well, or not see her as the Invisible or not Woman. See her. Yeah. It m- might be the it might be the yeah. case. Well, I mean, wow. real Invisible Man is joined up because we won't be seeing him. So. <laughs> no, we will not. <laughs> no, we will not at all. He has uh, legal matters he's, to which he's, 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 got, he's uh, got lawsuits to do. Yeah, he's got lawsuits. Well, he's, to do. he's he's delivering the lawsuits this time, isn't he? So yeah. was, that's that's a change. That's that's you know that's growing, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. That's growing. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about speaking of growing, uh, Marvel have actually embraced a female lead this week, so we should probably yeah. uh, probably actually uh, review Captain Marvel. So, Captain Marvel is the 21st MCU it movie. Is. 21st MCU movie. So, you know, they've had a few chances to have a female led one. That's not to say mm. that female characters have not been present. Not it's just been, none, yeah. has, none has had a top. I early. mean, two movies back, one of them actually got into the title. So that was... There's that, yeah. There's that. So that's... Is that really two movies back? I think it was now. It was after Infinity War, wasn't it? Well, that, that was... What, was that oh, no, what? Ant-Man and the Wasp was that the was last, last film. That Marvel was, movie. That was 20, yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, okay, that is really bad Marvel. Come on, now guys. We're, now we're back, yeah. And now, Well, I mean... They, they literally they They've left done it now. they left Africa and women so late. But anyway, it's beside the point. Okay, so... Captain Marvel, 21st uh, uh, Marvel uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, uh, written and directed officially by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, who, for, for my mind, brought us uh, Mississippi Grind. Um, but I think he's probably more half, half Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Of course it's Half Nelson. <laughs> that, beard, that beardy hipster teacher. Of course he likes Half Nelson. Of course Nelson. he likes that film about a beardy hipster teacher. The only thing we don't have is I don't do crack. 
but you understand. <laughs> That's really it. Yeah. So this stars um, your lady, one of your favourite actresses at the moment, uh, Brie Larson, as Carol Danvers, the latest entry into the pantheon of Avengers, as it were. She is well. She begins. She begins the story as Vers. She is an amnesiac yeah. soldier for the alien race, the Kree, who are the big blue dudes of which Lee Pace was the Ronan, v- Ronan, the, Ronan the Accuser. He was the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy. What was he before the Accuser? Uh, I don't know. R- R- Ronan because Bajuji. he's in. No, no, he's in this movie, right? Do they still call him Ronan the Accuser? That's his job title. Oh, that's he great. is one of the accusers. the accusers. His name's just Ronan, like Ronan Not Jones or yeah. you know Ronan Smith. <laughs> Ronan Jones. <laughs> Ronan Jones. You know Ronan Ronan, Ronan. Ronan the accuser Jones. You know, yeah. like Terry the blacksmith king. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish like you just there was like a like a montage of seen doing different jobs. Yeah, Ronan, yeah. Ronan the chef. That time he was the temp. Ronan the temp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ronan the office clerk. Ronan the orthodontist. Yeah. But you know that was six years of, of of training. He doesn't like to talk about anyway. So, <laughs> that's why he's got a big hammer. <laughs> that's what that is. That's one of those. So uh, Verz is an amnesiac soldier. She is a she fights on behalf of the Kree. She's like part of an elite unit, like a strike force, uh, who are led by Yon Rog, who's Jude Law. Uh, Gemma Chan in Alien Face and Jaiman Unsu, who also is playing a younger incarnation of his Guardians of the Galaxy character. And there's a couple more key players. I can quite uh, pick up the, the, the actors offhand. And um, she is captured in battle one day and subjected to mental torture by the evil, shape-shifting alien scroll race, the uh, uh, alien race called the Skrulls, led by the Mendo, Ben Mendelsohn. I will <laughs> explain Mendo. that term in the podcast next, as I will. Please do. Oh, that's an incentive for anyone not planning to listen to the Oh, yeah. You want to know what the Mendo is, you tune in for the podcast edition. And uh, so he subjects her to a mind probe. Some on some sort of repressed memories of her time before her amnesia start to kick in. They are memories of a distant world known as Earth. She then escapes the scrolls, crashes conveniently on Earth, and teams up with a with a sort of jaded, two eyed agent of Shield named Nick Fury. Here's a clip. Oh, oh, you want to get personal. Where were you born? Huntsville, Alabama, but technically I don't remember that part. Name your first pet. Mr. Snoofers. Mr. Snoofers. That's what I said. Did I pass? Not yet. First job? Soldier. Straight out of high school. Left the ranks of full bird colonel. Then? Spy. Where? It was the Cold War. We were everywhere. Uh, Belfast, Bucharest, Belgrade, Budapest. I like the bees. I can make them ride. Now? Been riding the desk for the past six years, trying to figure out where our future enemies are coming from never occurred to me they would be coming from above. Name a detail so bizarre a scroll could never fabricate it. A toast is cut diagonally, I can't eat it. You didn't need that, did you? No, no I didn't, but I enjoyed it. Okay, your turn. Prove you're not a scroll. So there's an almost 90s quality to... Uh, th- I mean, they're going for a retro 90s vibe anyway. Now, either through over-success or under success, depending on how you look at it, what they have wound up with is a film that actually wouldn't have felt out of place had it been released in multiplexes in 1995. Yeah. I'm, I'm down with that stuff. And that's, and that's fine. It, it's enjoyable enough, you know, regardless. It is an enjoyable movie. I was a little bit let down because I thought there was a little bit too much on the line with this one to sort of do that. I mean, it, in that way that, you know, we, we faced you know a great moment, of, a, a watershed moment for diversity when Black Panther was released. And that movie actually, against the odds, delivered. I think because Wonder Woman had been vaguely successful around that time as well in, in being a, a, a watershed moment in and of itself. I think there was just the expectation, oh, it's just going to be huge and wonderful and brilliant. And then you go in, you actually do get something that is a little bit more smaller scale and more concise than you expect. You're like, okay, cool. I mean, it's still enjoyable enough, but it's not got that sort of scraping the subject, looking for the, the, looking for what's in the weeds that winds up being the brilliance of something like Black Panther. And I'm thinking specifically of that moment of death is better than bondage. You know, that level of thinking. The way that Thor Ragnarok starts becoming about colonialism and you start thinking, wait, wait, wait hang on a minute. This is weirdly intelligent. Yeah. Why, why is this superhero movie suddenly making me think and ponder things? And this is a lot more conventional, straightforward a superhero movie. So there is also that. also putting a bit too much pressure on it just because it, I, it I, is yeah. the first female-led 
But that's the thing. I do find myself thinking, out, even outside of the first female-led thing, I do sit and think, isn't, isn't there too much? Just isn't there too much goodwill built up yeah. with Marvel now that we just we expect them to keep reinventing the wheel, and we need yeah, to I we need so. to do we need to let them slow down occasionally. Yeah. And also, this is what well, the, the first of she'll probably be signed up. She'll be signed up for two of the I think Captain Marvels six. and yeah, I think she's signed up for six movies. So it'll be this. Endgame, Endgame, two more Captain Marvel should probably pop up in somebody else's. Oh, face. absolutely. Yeah. And now, so about Brie Larson. Yes. So, okay, she's great. She's, she's <laughs> obviously great. Yeah. It is that role you always wanted to see her do. You know, there's plenty of single eyebrow raising, there's plenty of put downs, and she does get some time to be sort of, you know, quite admirably quite vulnerable. Now, that in and of itself presents another issue because the film never slows down to really explore the emotional vulnerability stuff. And it feels a little bit rushed in that regard. And you think, well, that's strange, because Marvel origin stories, more often than not, do seem to hang together purely because you're really emotionally invested in that particular hero. You know, and you think about, you know, Captain America could have been very underwhelming if Chris Evans weren't so damn charming. I think if there's anyone yeah. other than Chris Evans. <laughs> well, yeah. Because yeah. that film is fine enough for me, mm. but... But yeah, I did. He, he, like, I, uh, sinks to swim on on his performance. The other thing is that the world itself is not wonderfully textured outside of Carol Danvers, so you never get this too much right. of a sense. I mean, it's it's filmed and set in L.A., which I didn't realize until this movie came along. It's actually something of a rarity for a big budget blockbuster nowadays. They never actually yeah. happen in like downtown L.A. They like film it in Atlanta. And <laughs> yeah, Atlanta stand exactly that so, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but you do realise that I think LA's got a little bit more dour in that time. I mean, they've dropped the colour shading a couple of shades anyway because of the 90s setting. There is some great 90s humour in there, but I think it, it's far less frequent than the film itself actually descends into 90s grade but summer blockbuster. Um, having said that, I just had tons of fun with it, though. And I think the film is at its best when it gets to the third act and it becomes a lot more colourful and a lot more jazzy and a lot mm. more, I don't know, a little bit more cosmic, I suppose. Even though, you know, she is, there's aliens and stuff all the way. You know, it, it, Yeah. When it's, well, you, you kind yeah. of expect that of the climax of the third act for this kind of film. Don't you, you do. You know, you yeah. know you've got to have the crashy crashy. <laughs> you've got to. And like... <laughs> In a future Captain Marvel, it might all be it might all be in space, so we we don't know. Absolutely could, and I'd be intrigued yeah. to see how that's. Going. And you you don't know what's going to happen in future films. Yeah. That's that's the whole thing. The way that first Cap film was like good, but yeah, man, when, oh, when Winter oh, Soldier came, the around. leap to Winter Soldier, yeah, I know exactly. I know. So okay, so let's go through everything that's great about it. Uh, do not go into too much detail? Because I'm going into. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. You know, I'm being very spoiler free because I do want to discuss this with you I'm on a podcast <laughs> extra yeah. next week or top, top five next yeah. week um, when it's. Uh, Number two. When it's, it's number two, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to fight with my family because. Oh, I, I think instant family is going to. You think instant family is going to have a bump, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Sam Jackson's a hoop. Yeah. And he's I mean, enjoying having his uh, negotiator face. Well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah. they've de aged him. You sort of think, like, why? Because, I mean, he's like 90 <laughs> years old and he still looks like it's 1993. Yeah. You know what I mean? He still do all some perfect. When was the last time you saw a loaded weapon? I mean, he looks exactly the same as he did in a loaded do you know weapon. What? Not, not recent enough. <laughs> that film. That movie is great, isn't it? Yeah. I like uh, security and insecurity because the door signs are yes. my, my favorite, one of my favorite gags in the movie. Um, but yeah, so I mean, outside of uh, outside of Sam Jackson, you've got Annette Benning as well, who's obviously got that sort of natural grandeur that she brings to her role. Mm. She's got that, but the film doesn't really make too much of, of Annette Benning. I was a bit disappointed by that because she's just so good in any role, and yeah. you just you always want more Annette Benning. I mean, but you know. They, they leave you one. Well, Marvel films generally like to live quite mm. dangerously. They like to work without a net. There is that, yeah. I mean, I would, I would say her role here kind of compares to... Oh, my God, I just got it. <laughs> I was slow today. Uh, Annette Bening's role here, I would say, not in uh, you know, not in any kind of story comparison or anything like yeah. that, but in terms of uh, uh, presence, is about the same as Robert Redford in The Winter Soldier. I would say about that. Yeah. So, I, I, got, I got that from yeah, the marketing. Yeah, I, I expect that. Yeah. Having said that, you get a lot of fun out of the Predator-style squad, you know, that she's got going. So you've got, like, uh, uh, Jude Law. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Jude Law, G-Mon, uh, Gemma Chan. Chan. Yeah. The whole of the squad thing, that works pretty well. Mm. And uh, I like the chemistry between uh, Jude Law and Brie Larson. I thought that worked really well. Apparently, Robert Downey Jr. coached him on working with Marvel. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that makes me... Because Sherlock. Yeah. yeah. Just, Apparently, Robert Downey Jr. We, we have coached news him. about that, or, like... Yeah. The opposite of news, I guess. <laughs> um, I did like it. I did have a good time with it. And obviously I'll watch it again. I think if I were to give you a setting on which to put your expectations for it, mm. I would say, imagine Gamora in the first Guardians of the Galaxy 
gets amnesia and lands in Thor's movie and has to do that plot. That sounds fine. To Not me. that exact plot, but you know, that, I mean, that, that, that kind fine. of a story. And like, I, I don't know how you do the soldier story any other way. It's very true. It is a difficult one because it's a little bit so a little bit convoluted, yeah. isn't it? Really, but as this far as it seems like the most go, straightforward way to do it, just do like a buddy comedy. Other thing I'll say, no, no spoilers, but is something about the cat. Oh, well, yeah. as, as a dog person, how was the cat? Oh, fine. I actually met the cat before the movie. I'm not kidding. Seriously. I have an autographed picture of that cat. I'm not joking. They actually had the if, cat. If you gave that to my wife, yeah. she, she... I will I will do that. You know what? I'm going to give it to Cass. I have Goose's actual inked paw print on Goose's photo. So, she yeah. Would, she would cherish that for That is actually a thing they were doing at the screening for this. <laughs> that's that's inqu- okay. We did it for Guardians with the oh. with the raccoon. They could have. They could have. They could have. Uh. So yeah, but just imagine uh, you know Gamora in, in the first Thor. Yeah. But weirdly, as in what sort of an Agents of Shield season finale? Because there's a lot of Shield stuff in there. You know, you got not enough Coulson, obviously, because there's never enough Coulson. Well, it's um, not been any for a long time. <laughs> no, but it's nice to see him, you know, back in the big leagues for five minutes. That's mm. uh, that's kind of fun. But uh, yeah, I mean, see it by all means. You you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. I think I had a great time with it. I feel I'll like see everyone it everyone is. It's just twenty one films in. There's always going to be this level of. Feature. I think it is a much needed slowdown. I think because especially because Endgame is you know next. that's going to wrap I think it up, isn't it? So there's, there's you don't that. you don't need every film to be like, oh, this has mm. reinvented the wheel. There is uh, oh uh, as far as the the, uh, the the nerd side of this goes as well by the way I think newbies may struggle with at times with this. it's it's largely standalone yeah. but there are numerous moments in which they have to reference other it's you know entire, future yeah. there's table setting portentous table setting yeah I would suppose who is a newbie at this point though like, well yeah. I mean, there's going to be moments where you'd look over at your friends and be like, why is my Marvel friend suddenly so excited? And I haven't got any friends that aren't Marvel friends. So <laughs> I would like true. to put that out there. There is also, I would argue, a, a, a step taken too far as regards MacGuffins, I'll just say, to the point that if you're clued in on the wider mythology, you do find yourself thinking, oh, good, we're Prometheusing this and just ne- unnecessarily overcomplicating it. Just go to LV426 already. You know that one? Yeah. Yeah. Rather, rather than stop at the three planets on the way to LV four twenty six, sixty years yeah, in the future. Just do yeah. the thing. Just do the thing, man. Yeah. Like one stop on the way, I'll forgive <laughs> you. Not two. You know what I mean? Your android did not create the xenomorphs. You know that yeah. kind of. Thing. I've got to be. I've got to be back home by ten. Come on. <laughs> I've only got the sitter till nine. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. had fun with it. Uh, we'll see it again and maybe sort of Ant-Man level for me I would say on, on, on that, the spectrum that's fine yeah that's fine isn't it it's not bad is it yeah yeah fine so it's uh, it's not my film of the week I'm going to give it that it's not okay. my film of the week uh, I'm going to give Kindergarten Cop <laughs> <laughs> the kindergarten teacher, that's a contender I thought that was pretty out there um, I think to be honest with you Maiden I thought Maiden was tremendous I really loved it um, but yeah so yeah Maiden that's your, that's your pick for the week and cool. if you want a uh, sexy date night on Saturday night um, there is a documentary about the world's first uh, all female Whitbread racing team I don't think you can get sexy man, but I don't think it does no. But a uh, funny story, they actually, uh, in order to deflect from their uh, lack of success at one stage in the race, mm. the team, the maiden team, did actually all put their swimsuits on as they sailed into port. And it became, apparently, the most circulated photograph of that year. Really? Yeah, apparently. The, sail- the, the sailing team coming into harbour, yeah. and they're all in the swimsuits, and apparently that outsold every other syndicate photograph that year. Uh, so, yeah. Do you want to know uh, what is coming up next week? I do. What is next week, then? We have uh, Ben is back. Hang on. I actually saw this. I can confirm. Mm-hmm. It is about an individual named Ben. Okay. Who returns. Okay. Really Just, very brilliant, that title, didn't they? I mean, it's it's the snakes on a plane of drug titles. <laughs> Every time I see it pop up, I keep singing uh, It's the Tune of um, uh, Bitches Back by Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Ben, he's a Ben, a Ben, it's Ben. Fair enough, fair enough. And then, and then there's a film called Benjamin. Not the same Ben. No, do you know who's work? written Benjamin? Uh, who? Simon Amstel. Oh, really? Yeah. Simon Amstel wrote this movie. I, yeah, I have read about this. I think it's about it, yeah. star, is it Colin Morgan? I think so. I think is it in Merlin or something. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, we have, uh, this is unfortunately titled, 
The Prodigy. Because Keith Flint died. Because Keith this. Flint sadly yeah. died. Um, we've not spoken about Luke Perry, but we'll talk about him. Oh, we'll talk about him in the podcast extras, yeah. yeah. Um, we have uh, Under the Silver Lake, which is by the dude that uh, It Follows. This is buzzy, isn't it? Like, this got some festival love, I think. Yeah, like six months ago? Like. Feels like five years ago. <laughs> a while back. Yeah, now. we've been waiting for it for a long time, but it's got um, Andrew Garfield in it. It mm. looks. Kind of cool. It's like yeah. quite I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yeah. yeah, we have the fight. Don't know anything about that one. Neither do I. Presumably about a fight. Some kind of conflict. Some kind of scuffle. <laughs> scuffle. <laughs> yeah. Scuffle. Uh, girl. Girl. Not sure about that one. That is the new Curzon release, though. So I expect to be a really good foreign language film. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which yeah. which which language are we put money on? Oof, girl. Uh, sight unseen. I know nothing of the movie. I bet it's an Italian film. I'm going to say Urdu. Okay. Either is as likely it's a Curzon release. Quite possibly. All yeah. you know is it's probably good. Uh, we've got a film that has uh, 100% zero Mel Gibson. Uh, what Men Want. Oh, right. Okay, that title that you cannot believe someone pitched with a straight face. Yeah. Like, how, how much laughter do you think was given in response to that title in the room the first time it was pitched? I've got an idea for a movie, so yeah. we take What Women Want and we do What Men Want. And someone just looked around like, really? Come I on. like to think that, like, it was a bunch of studio execs in a boardroom for, like, hours and hours <laughs> and then to order Chinese food and then suddenly got to five in the morning and be like, what men want. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. like that. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, Fisherman's Friends. Starring I... my man, Mr. James Purefoy. He's yeah. There. And Danny Mays and Noel Clark with the best American accent you've heard. I'm, I'm intrigued by this. I'm intrigued. Yeah, so we'll I've, I've seen that trailer a lot recently. I have not seen a single trailer for it. I've, I've seen, seen like posters on like the underground. There's a really cheesy yet funny bit at the end of the trailer and it always cracks me up so I'll, I'll wait to see if that happens. Again. I will look forward to it. Yeah. So uh, we got all those to cover and more next week off screen. In the meanwhile, this has been the Candy Store production for Movie Marker. I've been Van Connor. I've been the kindergarten teacher. And we shall return. Just show me the way to get out of here and I'll be on my way. You've been listening to Offscreen. For more movie news, reviews and more, visit moviemarker.co.uk. OK, everybody, that's a wrap. Podcast extras. Ah, it's happening fun. right now. It's, it's going down. It's, it's jumping off. Down. It's ju- jumping off what? It's jumping off, man. It's jumping off. Do you want to hear about this really intriguing film that someone's making? OK, go on. What was it? I'm, I'm just going to see if I can find out who is making it. Oh, that's all right. I don't, I don't actually know. But, basically, it sounds like Twins. Yeah. But it's not Twins. It's called Brothers. Right. And it's going to be a comedy, and it's going to star Josh Brolin and Peter Dinklage. Josh Brolin and Pete, Peter in a, Dinklage. In a twin, Twins-esque comedy called oh, Brothers. Okay. Fair. That sounds like it could be really good, I suppose. Yeah. It is being written by Ethan Curran. No, that one could go either way, then. Yeah, because he's, he's written... Holmes but, and Watson. Yeah, but also Tropic Thunder, he was a co-writer on. Yeah, but also, <laughs> you know, Holmes and Watson. I, did you see Holmes and Watson? No, I don't think I needed oh to. Oh my God. I don't think I needed to. I did oh, not see it. It was actually hurtful. Yeah, that's a shame, considering who's in it. I mean, it was one of the... I, 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 the experience I had with it is it was... Uh, I think it was the 27th of... Uh, 20, Boxing Day, 27th of December. And they hadn't press shown it. Mm. Uh, for you know, somewhat obvious reasons. I went to a screening of it because I had to do a radio interview for Talk or BBC or something. And I went to a screening. It was you know, opening day, middle of the day. Cine World, Sheffield, on the M1. Should be busy. It was about half busy. And... Uh, <coughs> You know how people tend to be when it's holiday time and they're in a comedy? No matter how bad it is, they'll laugh almost out of politeness. Yeah, but like, this has got me out of the house today. Yeah, that, that lasted about 20 minutes of this film, which is about 75 minutes plus credits. It's very, very bad. Like, I, I mean, I personally didn't laugh once. I think I scoffed twice. A, I, a, a scoff is not a laugh. A scoff is not a laugh, is it? I mean, I hated it with the fury of a thousand suns, mm. but yeah, it was just tross. I actually felt bad for the actors, like the whole way through. Like, yeah. Every but we've been in such good things together as well. Like, I know. Yeah. I mean, Step Brothers is so good. It is. So, so good, Step Brothers. Yeah. Boats and hoes, man. At the Catalina, Catalina wine, wine mixer. mixer. <laughs> okay, so actually, we can say it's the fucking, fucking Catalina, Catalina wine, wine mixer. mixer. <laughs> but yeah, oh, so we, we need to talk to about uh, Senor Spielbergo, don't we? Yeah, should we just talk about that right off the bat? Let's, let's just get that let's, right out. Let's the way just let's say a fact first. Okay. Um, Munich, which is arguably like 
um, one of his best ones. That came out 14 years ago. That is the last time he's made like mm. a arguably good film. I would you think? Say. Yes. Okay. That's change my mind. Prove me wrong. No, I mean offhand, I can't particularly think of anything to prove you wrong. I mean, it's not like I'm going to whip out like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at my war horse. Like, <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, but Ready Player One was a genre-redefining masterpiece. I mean, all right, it should have won the Oscar for Best Special Effects, but, you know, aside from that... I shouldn't be given an Oscar for fucking watching that whole bloody thing. <laughs> I really liked uh, 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 Ready Player One. Yeah, do you know what that is? Because you like pop culture and you like other things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so that's you probably true. enjoyed that, as, as did I, but then as a film... I did have issues. No, no. It. Academically, I did have real issues with yeah. it as a film. I think it it sort of gives up on its own own real character arc quite early on. I just I got I sick know. of hearing myself going, "Huh, that thing." Yeah, huh, the purple rain jacket. It's huh. that uh, it's that Family Guy skit, isn't it, where they go into Robot Chicken Universe? Because oh, Transformers, Optimus Prime, He Man, and thing. These things existed. Mm. That that is Ready Player One. Essentially, you know, yeah. But yeah, I'll go with that. But no, no, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, Munich. I'll go with it. I will. I will agree with your point. Just for now, I've not thought of anything that can contradict it. Please take it away. No, you stop. <laughs> <laughs> so Spielberg's lashed out at Netflix, hasn't he? He's yeah. taken a shot. When the the idea is that Spielberg's going to address the governors, so the people that run the Academy slash Oscars, because you know, we as a people have voted him president of films. Apparently, yes. Yeah. And his issue seems to be that he doesn't think Netflix should be allowed to qualify in any way for Academy Awards because no. their version of a movie is a TV movie. And the irony of this is the movie that brought Spielberg to prominence in the first goddamn place was a movie made for TV yeah. that has now just been passed around onto, onto so many different formats that it's basically gotten lost in that way that it did, and people just think, think it's, it's a movie. A film, yeah, especially in this country as well. Yeah, like... people think Duel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. people think Duel is a, is a, is a made-for-theatrical <laughs> movie. It's a TV movie. It just happens to be very well made, you know, yeah. like any, any movie can be. I think it's just also just Donovan that he hasn't won an Oscar in 20 years. Well, there is that. But yeah. this is all because Roma came a hair's breadth away from winning Best Picture, as far as the optics are concerned. That's, yeah. that's what's happening. But there are arguments that there's like an anti Netflix uh, mm-hmm. thing going on at the Academy, and that's why he didn't win Best Picture. Yes. I think it was just so close and loads of things split the votes. Well, I mean, year. Netflix are what, what the industry, I think, refers, well, what sort of wanky marketing speak refers to as, dis- as a disruptor. You know, in that way that Uber is a disruptor, disruptor. to the transport industry, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, they, they seem to think Netflix is the same because it doesn't play quite as soft peddling as, as Amazon Prime does. And yeah, plus there's the whole can argument going on. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, obviously you know how I feel about it. Netflix movies are movies. That's the movies. Yeah. That's that move with the times. Yeah. They they start actors that would be in yeah. usual films. They are made by crews that would make films. You know, you want to tell Scorsese what he's making isn't a movie. Ex- do, yeah, do you reckon we're not, we're not yeah. best friends right now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you, you want to go and tell Marty that what he's yeah. making is a TV movie? You know? The amount of money they've dropped on that. Oof. But no other studio would give him back. No other studio would let Alphonse go on and make Roma. I'm about to say, because isn't the, uh, the Scorsese ones a two, like 195, 200 million or something? Yeah, I believe. at least. For the Irishman, it's called. Yes. And isn't half of this movie going to feature computer-generated de-aging technology? Yes, it's de-aging uh, Rob De Niro and Al Pacino, like half the film. My God, okay. Yeah. But that's not a that's, movie, though. But that's, that's not to mention well, not like, Joe Pesci being in this as well, and Harvey Keitel being in this, and, uh, and Bob Cannavale. I was just going to go with Bobby Cannavale. I, I knew you were. I couldn't think past Vince from Will and Grace, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> He's just Vince from Will and Grace. He's FBI man from Snakes on a Plane to me. You yeah. know, he's he's ex husband, he's ex wife's new boyfriend from Ant Man. You know, nice bro guy. Yeah, I, I love him in the second film. Yeah, no, well. I do. I love how he's growing out with. <laughs> how how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, but ne- Netflix seems to be this place where like mm. like auteurs are going, and that is not a bad thing. And like, I I might not be able to go see like a new film by like Bong Joon Ho. Like at my local cinema because she's not going to be there, but well, yeah, exactly. it's going to be on my TV. Netflix you know I mean? did respond in that way as well. Netflix did, yes, put they out did, yeah. their own response, which is, "Well, fuck you, you elitist." <laughs> you know, it's Munich too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mom Munich moms. <laughs> you killed Indiana Jones. Yeah. So um, one thing I did learn this week is apparently no more sequels to Happy Death Day or Sinister are coming. Oh, that's a shame. In the case of Happy Death, then kind of glad. Uh, yeah, I didn't see the second uh, one. Um, wasn't great. Okay, well. Yeah. It was a good premise, the first one at least. Well, yeah. I'm sure when I will, we just watch them both just for the hell of it. <laughs> uh, Sinister, I have not seen either, actually. Yeah, but I heard the first one was okay. Sinister, I think I've seen all the Sinisters. It's Insidious that I've not kept, kept up with. Like, the last key the has last been key. sat on my DVR <laughs> for ages. Um, there is a, um, a, a ridiculous uh, sort of rumour this week, by mm. the way. Uh, as regards as regards a Marvel movie, would you believe? And a female-driven Marvel movie. And a female-driven with a name in the title Marvel movie. And that is, of course, uh, Black Widow. She's getting so, her movie. Black Widow's getting her movie, I believe. I don't know, who is the director now? It's Kate Shortland, I believe, is directing that one. Chloe Zhao so. is directing... Is that uh, Eternals. Eternals, yes. That got news as well. Apparently yes, they I was want... Yes, bring it up. But by all means, please. Oh, let's do it right now. Um, yeah, uh, they are... Uh, actively searching for, searching for uh, an openly gay uh, male actor. So Matt Bomer's getting it. Good for that him. Would be ace. That he, would be ace. He's on Doom Patrol for DC right now. Yes, so, I know. And he's under bandages, so he feasibly could do it. Why not? I mean, he is really good in the Nice Guys. Yeah. Yeah. It, also, it was the first thing I saw him when I was like, yeah, man, there is a sort of alien godlike like quality good. to Matt Bomer as well. You he's, know, a, he's very well. Jaw. Sculpted. Yeah, terrific head of hair. You know, there's something of a statuesque quality to him. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's loads. There's loads of really great Brilliant. gay actors. As, oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, we shall see who uh, who gets cast. It's. Uh, yeah. I would like, like someone choice. that like you're not going to... Act, like when Chris Pratt went for Star Lord. Like someone... Exactly. You just, yeah. You didn't see it, did you? Like, like, like I don't, Andrew, I don't get Andrew, it. Andrew Reynolds or someone like that. Yeah. Just yeah. being like... Suddenly buffs up and he's able to do this and also <laughs> exactly. sing. This it'd be great. Oh, he's on uh, uh, Pat Black Monday at the moment. You've seen that? Yeah, I need to watch it. Really is good. It good. Really good. Yeah, uh, Paul Shears in it, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. Very, very funny as well. Uh, but of course, all about the Cheat Man for me. All about Don Cheadle. All about Don Cheadle. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, ridiculous rumor of the week. So uh, yes, Black, so Widow. Black Widow. It's going to be a female co-star for Scarlett Johansson, and uh, it's being claimed that there is a short list containing. Containing Emma Watson, Florence Pew Pew, um, Alice Englert, and Dar Zuzovsky from Hostages. Um, they apparently have all met with, auditioned, and have made a strong impact on the studio. So it's down to them, apparently. Uh, my money's on Florence Pew Pew, if that's the list. If that, if that I, I list can't, is I can't real. She's not ready, signed up for yeah. a Marvel film. If that list's real, Florence Pew Pew. If it's not real, then. Not Florence Pugh. Not, not Florence Pugh. Who, was, who else was it, sorry? Emma, Emma Watson. Emma Watson. That's too, big. Emma Watson. too big. Too big. She wouldn't do a Marvel movie. No. In a million years. I'd be, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> I'd be really shocked. Yeah. I'd, I'd not to like further link into Harry Potter, but I would love to see Daniel Radcliffe in a Marvel film. And I think he'd be open to being in a franchise. Could pull again. it off. Yeah. Could pull it off. I, I, I wouldn't be terribly shocked. But yeah, um, in the meanwhile, so uh, speaking of which, Matt bowman has got a, a lead. He's going to be the lead in the Sinner Series 3. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because you mentioned yeah. the sinner with the. I thought you were going to say Eternals, and I was going to. No, no, he's not. Uh, that that would have been. Amazing. I was immediately going to go to like William Hill and just place an insane bet on something. <laughs> would have been great. Yeah. Wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, so right, here's a weird one for you. So Linda Laplante. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right, who is uh, obviously was the, was the author who gave us Widows. 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 Right, she was on this morning on Tuesday. Oh, so not this morning, this morning. Not this morning, this morning. This, this morning, morning, the other morning. The other morning. Right. Yeah, so she was on this morning. She was on the couch on this morning, uh, on Tuesday, and she was uh, basically teasing that uh, there could be a film sequel to Widows. So, yeah. What would you call it? I don't know. Rewidowed? Rewidowed. Rewidowed. Nice. You all get married again. <laughs> you know, same, same thing happens. <laughs> very true, very true. Uh, apparently, the uh, that trench horror movie spin off for Aquaman. Yes. Apparently, that's going to come before the sequel to Aquaman. I think because it's going to be so damn cheap. I would imagine. I mean, it's going to be produced by James Wan, so it'll obviously have a certain level of quality to it. Yeah. And, Just yeah. like a cool underwater horror film would be. Very interesting. Yeah. Do you think it's Why just not? like Why not? teens gone holiday to a lighthouse and get yeah. you know, targeted she, by the Shoot it for 10 million. Yeah. <laughs> Have it out in six months. Great. Why not? Tag DC's name on it. Have you heard the pitch, by the way, for the new Christopher Nolan movie? Inception meets... What was it? North by Northwest. <laughs> cool. Wow. Okay. I'm in. 
I'm in. Apparently, it's going to have like a romance element to it as well. And you're like, oh, good, because Christopher Nolan does romance so well. I would love to see a Chris Nolan rom com. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oof. There's one person who Chris Nolan has been missing Catherine Heigl. <laughs> <laughs> or like, or like Sarah Jessica Parker. Get him. You know the weird thing, though? Like, Chris Nolan could get Matthew McConaughey to do that. Get him back into rom coms. Get him back yeah. into a Chris Nolan. That'd be amazing. But then the whole time, Twist has been the bookcase. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> exactly yeah. that. Also, did you know Chris Nolan's sporting a beard these days? No, let me have a look. But he's sporting like a, a, a DiCaprio Inception beard. Like, does it's he really not, like de-aged him? It, he has. He looks exactly like DiCaprio in Inception. Because he always wears that hair. suit as well and has that haircut. And, yeah. Yeah. And um, this is news that just happened. Go on, what you got? Makes me real happy. Um... Will Ferrell is uh, going to make a comedy for Netflix. Calm down, Stephen. Okay. Uh, about Eurovision. Oh, oh, I did it. That's mental. Yeah. Eurovision. I wonder how he's discovered I'd, Eurovision. I don't know. Well, like a couple of years ago, Justin Timberlake was there. He did like a big performance. Wow. I it, it, was, it was it was when Trolls was out, and he <laughs> was promoting that song from that massive song from Trolls. Oh God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course. Uh, apparently, that North by Northwest meets Inception quote has been pulled by its original outlet, by the way, now. So apparently, it's been it's incorrect. So it's, is the line. it's Vertigo meets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Did you know Universal are in talks to uh, to get the rights to and produce a Rock Hudson biopic? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Richard, oh, I can never pronounce this guy's name, Le Gravenies, who brought us The Fisher King. Uh, he's uh, it's apparently his project. He's writing it, and it's uh, going to be called "All That Heaven Allows." Mm. It's going to be based on the memoir by Mark Griffin, and uh, yeah, it's it's basically going to well, it's got a sort of Bohemian Rhapsody like quality to it, hasn't it? Because it was the heartthrob, it was the the romantic lead, but of course had a very different life off camera. Mm. And we're going to be saying that a lot in the next couple of years. A Bohemian Rhapsody like quality. When as soon as Rocket Man comes out. Oh God. <laughs> You know when the BAFTAs, there was that moment, did you see the moment at the BAFTAs when they just, when they, they sort of weirdly stopped the show to say, right, now we're going to admonish the film that we're hoping to heap praise on for next year. Yeah, Here's yeah. three of the actors from Rocket yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weirdest thing. And then of course they Here's all... next year's. Being yeah. Here's next year's being interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then of course the three of them turn up on stage and adopt this pose. And of course they're all hunky, sexy men of a certain very specific age. And the first quote that popped into my head was... <laughs> was the voice of Todd Phillips from the beginning of old school. <laughs> they just turned up and I just thought, we're uh, here for the gangbang? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see the Elton John thing? It was like an Oscar, a post-Oscar party. I think no, I did not. I think he does have a party though, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, him and Taron Egg- um, Taron- Ed- Edgerton? 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 Edgerton, apparently. Yeah, they, but... um, they sang uh, Tiny Dancer. <laughs> I together. saw the clip, yeah. yeah. But he was, he was just a bit like, and we'll be back next year. <laughs> Uh, right, bit of casting. I'm 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 a bit disappointed by this because I expected better. Of, I expected better of this man. Is it Jared Harris in Morbius? Well, actually, same film, different actor. Joking? No way. Joking. Okay, so Morbius, Mo- yeah. Morbius, 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 exists. not Morbius, Morbius. Doctor Doctor Michael Morbius, isn't he? Who yeah has the plasma, plasma Cause, cause vampire that's disease? Have. Yeah. Uh, who's going to be Jared Leto for the Spider Man less Spider Man spin off yeah. Morbius? So, Jared Harris, as you've pointed out. Jared Harris. He's yep. joined. Did I hear he's the villain at some point? I have not heard that, but that makes sense. I'm sure. I think I might have heard that. Don't quote me. I think I, might, I, think I You either get him as like a mental kind of person. I was mm. a bad guy. Now, <laughs> the final key role. Well, apparently, though, apparently Jared Harris is uh, apparently in some sort of mentor like role, actually. So, there, there, there we go. go. Yeah. Uh, now, apparently, there is a final key role yet to be cast. An FBI agent trying to hunt down Michael Morbius. Now, who would you get to play such an FBI agent? Steve Buscemi. Tyrese. No. Tyrese is being sought after to play this character. Just save yourself until you agree. Oh, I know. I just... Really, Tyrese? Uh, Matt Smith is in it as well. Yeah, I heard that. that. That's kind of... Uh, another odd one. I mean, did he just make such a great impression with Terminator Genesis? Is that what it was? I think it's. I think it's the crown more than anything. Because that uh, uh, Charles Manson movie hasn't come out. Did you notice? Like oh, it was at it was at whatever oh, festival. Do you remember? Yeah. And it got the absolute shit take. Uh, shit, shit kicked out of it by critics. Yeah. 
and then I don't I think it found like a low level distributor who wasn't going to release it for a while and it sort of disappeared into the ethos now yeah but because obviously I've critic friends who go to those festivals they disappear for like two weeks at a time and yeah. they've just been to two festivals back to um, back there is an actor who is going to be playing Charles Manson in uh, Mindhunter in season two of Mindhunter oh. and he's also going to play Charles Manson for uh, Quentin Tarantino in Once Upon a Time in the oh yes yeah. They did hear about that weird like they're, 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 not, they're not linked, but the same actor just looks and is so much like him. <laughs> He's just been cast twice. We didn't talk about Luke Perry, by the way. No, yeah, I think we should talk about yeah, Luke Yes, poor now. Luke Perry, so... Yeah. Yeah. Passed away at 52. I don't know how he died. Um, he had a massive stroke oh. um, the week before he died, and that, that led to his death, unfortunately. That's really sad. News. Yeah, because he, um, he was on Riverdale. Now. Yes, so I did he was, hear he was on yeah. that. It's not like he was on a comeback because he's kind of like consistently been working. Well, no, he, he's, yeah. he's never gone away, has he? No. He's, he's always been out there in something or other. Yeah, but, but apparently he's just been doing really, really well on this show and he, as, all, as well, is going to be in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, isn't it? I know. Yeah. But that's that weird thing with 90s actors, isn't it? They never quite go away. It's like Mark Paul Gosselaar has worked consistently and now since he's in the day. The, the, the path Passage? The passage, that's the one, yeah. The other path is... Aaron, Aaron... Aaron Paul. Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Two first name Aaron Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. Um, yeah, so obviously we know him from 90210, and he was in like a handful of films as well. Mm-hmm. Even though he's only in Fifth Element for like a minute or two. I don't yes, remember I remember. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. At least he fares better than Brendan Fair does in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Brandon Fair from Roswell? I think it's Brandon Fair. I don't, yeah. know. I don't even know who that is. Oh, hang on. Brandon Fair, Michael Fair... I think it's Brandon Fair. Who, who is in the first Guardians? Ah, oh, I'll let you watch the movie and find out. Next time you see the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, pay attention for Brandon Fair's Marvel at Marvel Cinematic Universe role. Yeah, I'm which sure is watch. nothing. <laughs> it's a dialogue it's just, it's a free. Blip. It is not even given a single line oh. of dialogue. If, every week we're going to cast some shade on a man I've never <laughs> heard of before. Uh, so Will Smith. Yes, he yeah. is playing Richard Williams in a film called King Richard, and Richard <laughs> which is a great title. It is. Yeah, yeah it is. Richard Williams is the father of uh, Venus and Serena. Williams. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of... People who are, ma- are, are annoyed. People mad. Pe- people mad. Why are people, people mad? Because I, I guarantee it's probably not for the reason I would be. People mad because they say that he is frankly not black enough. Oh, okay then. That that is, but his yeah, his uh, his skin tone is not dark enough to play uh, Mitch Williams, who they say is quite dark skinned. So it was a similar thing a few years ago when Zoe Saldana was played Nina, Nina Simone. Simone. Yeah, and, I mean that came from Nina Simone's family. But like, oh, she's not black enough to be Nina Simone. Mm-hmm. So that was actually done at their request, then. Yes, I remember people were kind of offended by by that movie and kind of accused a black woman of blacking up, as it were. I think at the yeah. time. But I don't think Will Smith will do that in this case, though, to be fair. So uh, there's that. I mean, my my issue with it is, hang on a minute. So Venus and Serena Williams, you know, mm. these, these you know, game-changing female tennis <laughs> players. We're doing a film about better. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're literally giving them the story that they you know, deserve to have on the screen about their dad. That is so deranged. Yeah. That is just, wow. I mean, I can't believe that made it past the drawing board. But I mean, obviously, we don't know what... Like mm. what exactly is going to be in this one? So it might be that turns out to be that film, but I like also don't don't call it that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe maybe not the right time. Even Williams would have made more sense. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel like to do 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 like an Itonia kind of thing, Although, have, having be like a big mobile character in it. I mean, Will Smith Williams would have been a great poster if you were really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you mentioned this earlier, Sherlock Holmes three. Has been pushed back. Been pushed back because to uh, yeah. three thousand and then eleven. Yeah, because the world is seriously waiting for that. Uh, December twenty first, twenty twenty one. That, so, is that a decade after the second one? I think I think it might be, actually. It might yeah. actually be ten years out. Um, that's going to put it, by the way, five days after Avatar 3. So that's going to get pushed again. Mm-hmm. And on the same day as uh, Hotel Transylvania 4, which I didn't even realise was on the books. And Wicked... I mean, you've got about an equal chance of Wicked oh, coming God, out of yeah. for this coming out, but... So, here's... And an untitled Disney live-action movie, so... Mm. So, I, I've got something for you, and it's, it's a bad one. There is a visual component involved as well. Uh, the final look for Sonic the Hedgehog has been unveiled this week. 
I don't when know if was you've, that? I don't know if you've had the pleasure of this. Please allow me to present to you how, in live action form, Sonic the Hedgehog will be represented. Is it just John Ralphio? It is not John Ralphio. Is that not just the most bizarre thing you have ever seen? That's not real. That is real. Now, then you start to learn some interesting things about this film. I, ref- I refuse to believe that's real. Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog is opening in six months. Did you know this? Yeah. Yeah. Whatsoever. November the 8th. So the trailer for this has mysteriously been delayed and the animation seems to have been tweaked. And I don't know what's going on with this movie, but I think they're aware that uh, the knives are out for it online, so to speak. That's a shame because I think you've got someone really good doing the voice. You've got a really good cast. Yeah, I know. Who was the voice again? Um, uh, ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz is the voice. But uh, it's a good choice for the voice, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. But I mean, I still want to see. I'm more interested in seeing Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, to be honest. But Yeah, wait until that's when, he starts, when I'll start judging. Yeah, that, that's when I'll get excited, I think. Um, your boy Oscar Isaac has made ripples in the nerd world this week by, I think he was, was he yes, on he a did. podcast or something? And Oh, he was just in a press junket. He was asked, um, what franchise lead would you love to have? Did you hear his answer? What did he say? I, I don't think anyone expected this. Metal Gear Solid, that's the one. I'm throwing my hat in for that one. That'd be great. Give I'd, it to him. I'd watch the shit out of that, wouldn't yes. you? Just, you know, that that, that, that oh, alert noise. Yeah. I, I would so be in on that. Um, that movie is in development, though. It's in development at Sony. It's been there for two years now. Uh, Derek Connolly's writing it with, uh, you know, Derek, Derek Connolly goes Jurassic World, for instance. Yep. Um, and the director attached to it, Jordan Voigt Roberts. Who did Kong. Kong Skull Island, yeah. Hmm. So interesting. Oh, he's been attached for ages. Yeah, well, I'd say two years. But uh, if your mic fallen off, is that what's happened? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you back? Are you back? This is what happens when we clip, get clip, clo- clip. when we get clothing fitted uh, mics. <laughs> I'm but, back uh, in the room. Do you have any other news left for this week then? Because well, my I'm MacBook has just died. Your I MacBook forgot died. to bring my charger with me. So oh, I guess. Oh, okay, that's a shame. I'm just going to see what this is because apparently we do have a headline that there is uh, there are new rumours about Blade and the Fantastic Four. Um, there Give is it a- to me. I know. So there's a rumour, and this always comes from the same kind of sources, like hashtag show. Is it John David Washington is being played? Because if not, I don't know. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. Yeah. That would be good. That'd be incredible. I mean, it's not John Boyega in, in Pacific Rim Uprising mode, which I would really love to see as Blade. <laughs> um, right, so there is a report. Marvel is quietly developing an R-rated Blade movie with Wesley Snipes involved in a sort of passing the torch-like narrative in, in oh. an event. Right, I would watch that definitely. And so, like Whistler, but yeah, in in a Whistler capacity to bust this, his daughter, Lady Blade, so, yeah, Lady Blade, yeah, <laughs> ex- exactly that. So, I don't know. Wesley Snipes did mention last year that he was talking to Marvel about multiple uh, Blade projects. Oh. So, I would expect at least one of those to be animated, though. Like you would think, so, I would yeah. think that'll happen. Like there'll be a, a, you know, or even like a new like run as well, something like that. But uh, okay, and uh, meanwhile, apparently, a Fantastic Four film is rumored to actually already be in development at Marvel. I wouldn't be surprised at that anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if that is actually a quite place too. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's secretly going on. It's not quite place too. John Krasinski and, and Emily Blunt are in fact doing the Fantastic Four. But oh, uh, the rumor that's as well, by the way. The Fantastic Four, apparently, this is the rumour, it will be a cosmic adventure that would see the 20 and 30-something team exploring space, and Doctor Doom will not appear in the film. And that's... that's, Save him. Yeah, Yeah. save him, and he needs to be the Joker of your Dark Knight trilogy, if you know what I mean, in in that way, but actually with a third film to sort of cap it off. Yeah. But, uh, which, you know, know, sadly there's not really much choice in that, but that would have made the, the Dark Knight thing perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, although apparently uh, the original plan was he only would have appeared in what ultimately was the Scarecrow cameo. Yeah, I, I don't think he was going to be that big of a part. No, apparently it was really. just going to be like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, one last bit of news I'll uh, I'll divulge is apparently Arrow is going to end next year. Yeah, I I've kind of it's not a fallen out, but I've just um, yeah, there's just been other things to watch. So I've not actually mm. been following it since season six, I think. So I'm going to wait for it all to wrap up and then just beast it, just watch it all. Well, um, this is the thing, apparently... It's is, is it good? Is it good that it's finishing? 
I think so. I mean, the series could potentially go on forever like Supernatural does. That's it, yeah. yeah. But you might as well... Yeah. Ten episode, eight season. Yep. And then the final appearance of that character will be in the crossover event with all the other shows, Crisis on Infinite Earths. So mm-hmm. his fate, I would not be surprised. I, I, I have a guess at that, but, you know, it's in the title. But, uh, yeah. Yes, that would make sense. Do you think that that slot will be filled with the Batwoman show? I feel that that would be the, the logical case, yeah. I think now you've got a Batwoman show, there's no need to keep pretending like you do with Arrow. But and... he's Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think we all know. Uh, one last piece I'll leave you with. Uh, Scooby-Doo animated movie. Have you heard the voice casting on this? It's awesome. I know. Is it, it Will, Will, Will Forte? As Shaggy. Yeah, Tracy Morgan. I don't know who Tracy Morgan is. Tracy Morgan's the, the caveman pirate. Uh, the, the caveman pirate character? Or pirate caveman caveman? Pirate. I forget. What? I will find the details. Yeah, I know. Gina Rodriguez is Velma. That's another one that I heard. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and I think Frank Welker is Scooby. So, yeah, I mean, how do you argue with that? I'm looking forward to that. That's, but, that's uh, ace. Yeah. That is ace, isn't it? On which note, let's stick with awesome animation then this week. Not because I'm in any way obsessed with this movie or anything. <laughs> but here it is. Your moment of cage. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something, anything. Oh. 